All right, welcome to the video where we're going to be working through some methods of proofs using the side, 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 and hypotenuse like congruence theorems for triangles. So remember, uh, these two theorems are used to prove that two triangles are congruent to one another. Um, now, just a recap of what these theorems are. So side, side, side theorem says that if three sides of one triangle are equal to the corresponding sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Um, so if you look at this diagram here, you can see that all three sides of this triangle are congruent to all three sides of this triangle. So by using side, 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 we can say that those two triangles are congruent to one another. Um, now these theorems, um, and this is just a common thing in geometry, our theorems are always written as our reasons in our proof. Um, so if we're using this theorem, um, our reason has to be stated in your proof you write it like this side 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 is congruent to side 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 now what that means is the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides in another triangle okay so hypotenuse leg um, this is only for right triangles. so if you don't know that a triangle is a right triangle automatically you know that you cannot use this theorem um, so this says that if the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another triangle then the two right triangles must be congruent um, and if this theorem is being used in a proof how you would write it um, is hl is congruent to HL and again what that says is the hypotenuse and leg of one triangle um, are con or is congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another triangle. All right, um, so this proof checklist is something generic that you guys can use for every proof that you do. Um, and I'm not gonna read through all the steps, I'll read through the steps as we go through an example. Um, but these five steps, again, it's not just with triangle proofs, it's with any type of proof. So some general tips, um, if you have triangles with a shared side or if you have overlapping triangles, it might help to separate those triangles because um, when you separate them, you might more clearly see what's going on. Now, this is more the case if you have overlapping triangles. Um, you guys will see an example where we have shared sides in a second, um, which is not so hard to see what's going on. But if your triangles are overlapping, like if they look like this, you might want to draw them separately and relabel so you can see what's happening there. Um, uh, number two, if triangles are in a different orientation, for example, one is rotated or flipped around, you should re redraw them so that they are in the same orientation. Um, and number three, when redrawing diagrams, you can use the order of the letters in the triangle to help identify the corresponding pieces. So we'll go through uh, two examples together today. Um, so this question says, given XA is congruent to YA and M is the midpoint of XY, prove that triangle XAM is congruent to triangle YAM. So right away, if I'm proving triangles congruent, I can only use my triangle congruence theorems. So far, um, all that we're using right now is side, 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 or HL. So I know from the get that I'm using one of those. Now, step one in my proof checklist says, look at our given information and label this on our diagram. So let me just make a statement reason chart real quick. Um, so our first given is that XA is congruent to YA. So we want to make sure we label that in our diagram um, and we write it in here as well. XA is congruent to YA, right? Um, and then we also have that M is the midpoint of XY. So I'm going to go ahead and go like this and I will just write midpoint and I will write that in here too. So M is midpoint of XY. And again, our first reason is just always given. Um, and then it said again, so we did steps A and B. We wrote, we labeled our givens and we wrote them as our first statement. Now it says to try to come up with a game plan in your head for what our method of proof is going to be. Um, there might be extra information that we don't really need. Now in this example, we won't really see this, um, but there might be times where you can make a million conclusions, but you don't need all of those conclusions to come up with your proof statement. Um, so there might be times where you need to decide what's important and what's not. All right, step three uh, says make a conclusion from the given information. Now, a lot of times there are going to be multiple givens, so we're going to be able to make multiple conclusions. You just want to go one step at a time and make sure we're repeating this step for as many givens as we have. So what I like to do is I like to make a checklist or a checkbox um, above each of my givens. So XA is congruent to YA is one. M is the midpoint of XY is another one. And the reason I do that is to make sure that I'm addressing all of my givens uh, if I need to. So XA is congruent to YA. We can't really make any conclusions from that, but I'm going to check it off since we labeled it and wrote it in our proof. 
Now, M is the midpoint of XY. So we labeled that and we wrote it as, as our uh, given statement. However, we can make a conclusion of that, right? And this is why vocabulary is super important. We know that midpoints split a segment into congruent parts. So if M is my midpoint, I know that XM is congruent to MY. So since I put that label down, I'm going to make sure that I write this in my proof. Because if I just wrote the tick marks and didn't address it in my proof, it's almost like we didn't say it at all, right? So again, XM is congruent to MY. And our reason is usually just going to be a definition that we used, right? We said we knew M was a midpoint. And our logic was midpoints split a segment into two congruent parts. Perfect. All right. Um, number four, can we prove what we need to? If so, great. If not, try to make another conclusion based on what we've stated so far. So right now, I cannot, based on my given information, I can't use side, 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 and I can't use HL yet. But from the looks of it, I'm gonna, like, just by looking at, like, I know I don't have a right triangle, and I have nothing about perpendicular lines, so I'm taking HL off the table. I'm, I'm going to attack for side, side, side. So I already have two out of my three sides. Now, nothing else in my given, and, and I actually forgot to do this. We're going to check off the midpoint one. So there's nothing else in my given that I can attack. So this is where I need to kind of make use of this little important star at the bottom. So it says, always be on the lookout for shared sides. They are freebies and may help you prove what you need to. Um, so I'm noticing that AM is a side that's in both of my triangles. Now, this kind of goes back to the tip that I said before, where it might help to draw your triangles separately, right? where here would be A, and then here would be M, and then we have X and Y here. Now, if I re-put my labels in, I'm here. Now, the reason why we're putting that X there is because AM, wherever, it's, wherever, wherever it is, right, we have AM here and we have AM here, that's going to be the same measurement. So you can use the X or you can use the three tick marks too. It, it's up to you. Um, but when I draw it separately, I can really see that I have that third side, right? But remember, when we have a shared side or a shared portion, we have to use the reflexive property. So my third step, I'll say AM is congruent to AM. And my reason there is the reflexive property. Now, I could have put this as my step two. Um, sometimes a good habit would be like if you see a shared side, label it and get it out of the way right away. Um, so if you did this as step two or step three, that is totally fine. Um, now, um, step five, because we made another statement. Can we prove what we need to? If so, great. If not, repeat step four until we can. Well, I have enough info right now. All three of my sides of each triangle are congruent. Um, so now I can go ahead and make my, my, my statement. So I can say triangle X, A, M is congruent to triangle y i am now again our reasons are gonna be the theorem so whenever you're proving triangle congruency you need to mention one of the theorems now we've only done two so far there are five in total um, but the one that we've used we have that all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle so we're using side 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 and how we write that is side 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 is congruent to side 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 and again, what that means is, and we can write this in a slightly different color, um, the three sides of triangle number, or the three sides of triangle XAM, and you guys don't have to write this part, this is just for you to understand it, the three sides of triangle XAM are congruent to the three, the three sides of triangle YAM, right? That's how, how we kind of interpret that. All right, we're done. That is a four-step proof. Um, and we've used our checklist to help us do that. So again, make sure you're looking for those shared sides uh, and label those. I, I, I should have gotten it out of the way right away because it's a freebie and it gives it gets us a step in the right direction. All right, now one more example. Um, we're going to use our proof checklist again, but we have some different given information. Now, don't get confused. The diagram is the same, but the givens are different. So before I do anything, this should really be step zero in your checklist. I'm making my statement and reason chart. Um, step number one, look at my givens. Label this on our diagram. So we have that AM is perpendicular to XY and XA is congruent to YA. So I'm going to label that first, XA, YA, and I'm writing my givens. So AM perpendicular to XY and XA is congruent to YA. Oops. And our reason is given. I'm going to go ahead and make some check boxes on my givens to make sure I address everything. Now, the XA being congruent to YA, there's nothing else I can really say. There's no conclusion I can make from that, so I'm just going to check that off. 
Um, and I'm actually going to get into the good habit of, uh, or you know what, let's, let, we'll deal with our givens first. So AM is perpendicular to XY. Now, right now, um, when we see the words perpendicular or we, we see the symbol of perpendicular, we should automatically be thinking about our right angles. And our first instinct would be to label where those right angles are, right? So if AM is perpendicular to XY, I'm going to have some right angles right there. Now, right after you have your perpendicular, if you have something given to you about perpendicular lines, there are two statements that need to come right after, right? You need to state the right angles. Um, so we have angle XAM and angle uh, AMY are right angles. And our reasons are going to be those definitions, right? How did we know they were right angles? Well, perpendicular lines form right angles. And that's the definition, right? That's a definition of perpendicular lines. All right, uh, now that is like the peanut butter or like the Mario. Uh, now the jelly or the Luigi, right after you say that the two angles are right angles, you need to say they're congruent. So angle XAM is congruent to angle AMY. And the reason there is always, hey, all right angles are congruent. So again, um, you might want to make this, this label in your proof. They, these two always come right after perpendicular lines. All right, now I guess we can go ahead and check that off since we've addressed that. Um, now we've addressed our givens. Um, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to come up with my game plan. Let me, let me take a step back and see what we got. So I see that we have something about perpendicular lines, right? I see my right angles. So again, the two methods that we have right now are side, 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 or HL. Now the fact that we have those right angles is kind of shouting out to me that we're going to use HL because I know I need a right triangle. So right now, I have two right triangles in there. Um, so, so I'm going to go ahead and try to attack HL. Now there might be times where you choose a game plan and it doesn't work, and that's totally okay. Um, now I see this shared side here. I'm going to, I'm going to address that, get it right out of the way. So, um, try, uh, AM is congruent to AM and that is because of the reflexive property. All right, now let's see, can we prove what we need to prove? Hmm. Well, first thing I'm noticing is that I have right triangles. My hypotenuses are congruent. And then again, it might help to draw these two triangles separately here. Um, because it might give you a better view of what is going on. So again, we have our hypotenuse is congruent. And then we also have these two sides. AM is congruent to AM, right? So if you look at this diagram here, you can kind of see, hey, my hypotenuse are, are, hypotenuses are congruent and one of my legs are congruent as well. Now, if you go back to the definition or, or the explanation of HL, that's exactly what it states. So I can use HL now to say, hey, triangle XAM is congruent to triangle YAM. And again, whenever we're stating that two triangles are congruent, we need to justify it with one of the theorems. The method we chose was HL. So we have to write that as HL is congruent to HL. And similar to when we did the, the last example, um, this reads as, hey, the hypotenuse and leg of triangle XAM are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of triangle YAM. So since that's the case, I can, I can use that theorem to say, hey, those triangles are actually congruent to one another. All right, so make sure, uh, again, like the order that you do things might differ, um, so you don't always have to follow the exact order of the proof checklist, but um, it's a good thing to, to fall back on. So you can see like sometimes you might want to get the reflexive property out of the way right away, and that's totally fine. Um, sometimes you might take a couple of steps to come up with your game plan, and that's also totally okay. Um, but again, if you get stuck, go back to that proof checklist as a, as a crutch. And there also might be different ways to prove certain things. Um, right now, we're a bit restricted because we only have these two theorems. However, um, when we learn the other three triangle theorems, there, there might be some freedom in how you guys do your proof.